you could be alive. Welcome to the channel, Grand Columbia. Today's video is going to be about 10 things I dislike in Armenia. First, I want to do a quick update. Tomorrow, there are plans for me to go to the cloud forest, not too far from Armenia. I'm going to be doing an interview with Nico, and I think you're going to find that quite interesting. Next week, I'm going to be in Manizales most of the week until Wednesday, maybe Thursday. And it'll be nice to go back and uh, show somebody around. There's a lot of uh, fun, interesting things there. Uh, great place to visit. Great place to live. Uh, so I may do a video while I'm there. And no, I didn't forget the video of Circassia. The last couple weeks, I've actually had a lot of trouble getting it coordinated. Now, as I've told you before, when I go out of town, I need to have somebody with me to help me with camera equipment, various things. And it's a security thing. You just have to, you know, play smart. I'm having trouble putting together time in the day when there's light uh, that I can get somebody to go with me. Uh, it's not a normal thing. It's just been a, the last couple of weeks have been kind of crazy for people that I know. That's been a little problematic. I will get to it. Uh, patience. There's lots of things to do videos about. Last thing on the update is the dating live this Saturday, 6 p.m. Columbia time. It is a go. There are enough people that have uh, registered for that video that I will for sure be doing that video. Uh, if you haven't registered, make sure you send it to the email. It's down in the listings below this video. Hope to see you there. Should be pretty good. One person said, I can't be there at that time, but I'll catch the video later. Uh, in this case, sorry, but you won't be able to. This is going to be an unlisted link. And once we do the video and, uh, you know, we all have our say on the video, and we're, we're done with it, uh, it won't see the light of day, at least for the near future. Okay, let's get on to the 10 things I dislike. I had a heck of a time doing this list, and I've actually been working on this for the past year. What it really boils down to is there's, there's really nothing I, I dislike to any degree. I guess the things I'm going to tell you might be annoyances or, oh, I wish, but it's something that I infrequently, that I will rarely run into. They really don't present any issue in my life. But let's get to it anyway. Number one, street people. There's a fair amount of street people. And as I go along, I'll be doing a, a, a few comparisons to maybe Cuenca, Ecuador. Uh, not to beat up on Cuenca, Ecuador or here, but many people that watch the videos have visited both or have lived in both. In Cuenca, the street people there are kept off the streets. There's an impression that there's, you know, few panhandlers except, you know, the old indigenous ladies who sit on the steps. And that's really not the case. There's just as many, if not more, poor there, but the police keep them off the streets. They, they, they don't let them do this. So here, it, it's free and open society. And if you want to go panhandle, you can panhandle. And when you have an influx of, of the Venezuelans coming in, on top of that, you've got local and Venezuelan people panhandling. There's parts of the city that, you know, it's hard to walk 50 feet and not run into one. Now, I will say that most of them are selling things, you know, be it gum or candy, something. They're selling something and hoping for a donation to go along with it. And, you know, I can appreciate and respect that. But the place that I can't, and this one is annoying, is when you sit down in a restaurant to eat, and almost every restaurant in Armenia has an outdoor portion so nice, you almost always want to sit outdoors. And these people will target you and they'll come up and you can be in the middle of eating and they're hitting you up for something. And that's really, it's really annoying. I mean, I appreciate their situation but damn can i eat in peace 
So it gets so where you sit is affected by that situation. So that's number one. Number two, lack of internet to pay the bills. It's just not a thing here yet. It's twice as good as in Ecuador, but that that's not saying anything. It's, I can't pay my water bill unless I go to one particular place in Armenia. That's really annoying. It's not near my house. I, 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 I don't like it. Um, I can't pay my gas and electric on the internet. I will say the nice thing about the gas and electric is there's places all over that you can actually pay it. So I, I only have to go a few blocks to pay that. On the other hand, I still have to go pay my water bill, so I don't know, you know, I don't know how much I'm saving. Uh, Moby Star, for some reason, the internet uh, payment doesn't work. I, I've got it to work one time over the months. So that's problematic for me, and that leads me to number three. Many internet sites don't function properly. You go to a site, you open it up, and it doesn't open, or it opens and closes real fast, or they're just poorly done. Internet is is not given the importance it should, although I will say that most businesses have some sort of internet presence, and so that's definitely real progress, and it's very useful, but uh, they they got a ways to go. Uh, number four, I wish people were more direct. It's this culture of being polite, and here you, you see emotions, and they, there's no shyness of emotions in, in Colombia in general, here in Armenia. But Armenia is a very polite place, and, you know, somebody could completely disagree with you, but, you know, you may not show it in conversation. And it can be frustrating because you can talk to somebody and think you're kind of on the same page and then find out later that you're really not. And I realize being from New York, I tend to be more direct than people in most of the United States. Uh, but here, it's even more than that. And I appreciate directness. Uh, to me, directness equates to honesty. Uh, I'm not saying they're being dishonest here. It's just, for me, it can send me a different message. For them, being polite is more important than getting across whatever the point is. So uh, that's something I don't like. Number five, business inefficiencies. Well, service is dramatically better than when I was in Colombia or when I was in Ecuador. It still has some room to be desired, and it's in Armenia. It's not due to friendliness or uh, a lack of them coming to take care of you, where a lot of people watch this are in Medellin, and that's a huge problem there. That's not the issue here. It's that business in general here just are not very efficient. They don't have procedures that will allow a built-in efficiency. Uh, that's kind of a mature process in Europe and the United States and in Canada, and here it's in its infancy. Uh, they really need to hire people like me. I, I used to do consulting work on business processes, procedures, efficiencies. And and so it, it's especially bothersome to me to go in and see the way they do things and realize they could do it half the time and make twice the profit. And it's like, uh, but it's not my place, it's not my country. You know, they do things the way they do things. So I'm going to respect that. But internally, it, it it's, some, it's a bother to me. There's a new trend in Armenia for number six that has gravitated from Bogota and Medellin, where it's much more prevalent there. But I've seen it in a number of places, in, in restaurants that you would consider to be a little more upscale. Okay, you go to lunch. I'm not talking $2.50 lunches. I'm talking about a place where you go have lunch, and it might be 7 or $8. So middle of the road or upscale, 
or more specialty. This has be become a trend. Now get to the point. Be more direct. All right. Uh, the trend is when you're done to ask if you want a 10% tip added to the bill. Knowing full well that this is not a tipping cu culture and that people get paid here full pay. Tips are not supplementing their salary. And in some cases, businesses take the tip and the waitress doesn't even see it. It's problematic to me because it's just a money grab. And I've seen it in four or five places here in Armenia. It's a new phenomenon here. And I don't like it. I wish it would just stay where it is and, and not come here. But that's the way it goes. Okay, number six, no English movies. Here in Armenia, uh, there, there's a claim that they have subtitled movies 9 o'clock at night, once a week, or for hit movies. But I've gone to the theaters, and I've talked talk to the people at the theater, and they say almost never. They say occasionally, if some blockbuster comes out, that you might get a couple nights where it's there but uh, people here don't like subtitles I don't blame them uh, they certainly don't want to hear it in English and and so it's really not available uh, I miss that that's a plus about Cuenca one of the theaters uh, at Millennium Mall would uh, every night at usually around 8 o'clock at night would have a movie in English with Spanish subtitles uh, in Pareda they have that once in a while, but, you know, I don't want to go to Pareda at night and try to, you know, come back after the movie, to come back after the movie, you know, by then I'm looking at a hotel, it can, it, it can be a real hassle. Okay, number seven, or is it number eight? Um, I had two number sixes, so I'm going to have a bonus here coming up. No mail service. Now, this has only been a problem once, but it was a big problem. And I'm still waiting since January for a letter to show up. Fortunately, I was able to find what I need on the Internet, fill out what I need, and get it sent uh, back to the United States. But it's problematic. You have to use FedEx or DHL, uh, the same as in Ecuador if you want something to actually arrive. Okay, uh, number eight on my list, number nine, because they had two sixes. And this is Latin America in general, getting directions. Now, Armenia is somewhat of an exception to this, but it, it did happen to me a few months back, and it's part of Latin America, but this is a common thing. You go up and you say, do you know where such and such is? And they say, oh, yeah, go down two blocks and go to the right. You go down two blocks and go to the right, and there's nothing there. They make it up. And it would drive me crazy in, in Ecuador because it was so common. If they don't know, they just make it up. I thought it was like a sport at first. I thought they were intentionally just lying. And there's probably some people like that that just kind of think it's funny but I think for the most part is if they're not sure they don't want to say that it so they just make it up maybe they think it's more polite to give an answer than to say they don't know I don't know what that is I I, I haven't been able to get a get my fingers around that but uh, I hate it okay now this is gonna sound petty to you this is number eight or nine, depending how you look at it. The way they tie grocery bags. Ecuador, no exception. They take the plastic bag and they tie it. And then they tie it again. And now you get this little loop that my fingers don't even fit in. And if I'm going to carry seven or eight bags or six or seven bags or however many, and if I've got... I love agua de coco, so it comes in cans. Well, a canned drink is kind of heavy. You put six in there, and, you know, it's straining on your fingers. It's okay at first.
But if you're walking any distance, your fingers, you know, it's cutting off the blood supply. You look down, they're all beet red, turning purple. <laughs> it's, I just hate it. So they tie them up and then I have to untie them. I don't know why they do that, but that's what they do. And um, it's kind of annoying. And number 10 or 11 as a bonus is megaphone vendors. Now, I have fond memories when I lived here some time ago in Pereira, and I was actually staying in Das Quebradas, and there, there was a vendor that would come around around 6, 6.30, crack of dawn, and he'd be going, huevos, huevos, eggs. He was an egg vendor. And there weren't very many people out, if any, and his voice would just kind of echo, and it was soothing. And it reminded me, actually, when I was in the Marine Corps, uh, we'd get out 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and the drill instructor would sing his cadence, and it would just echo, and it was very comforting and soothing. And, and so I've always enjoyed that. And then they come around, they got queso, and you, you could just gather your breakfast over about 30 minutes in the morning where they come door to door. Well, here, I've got the same thing. I've got, in the afternoon, there's always a guy with chocolates that's, uh, that's like a sweet corn arepa, uh, like, almost like a cornbread thing. I love them. They're very tasty. And you can hear them every day. Choclo, choclo. So you have your vendors. You've got vendors that sell brooms, all kinds of things. It's a tradition here. And I have no problem with it. So why is it on my list? It's on my list because some of these use megaphones. Yeah. Ah, loudspeakers. It's, it's annoying. It really bothers me. And you're walking down the street, and they're using loudspeakers right there. So... You walk by this guy and he starts talking and blasts your eardrums. It just, it's a cacophony. It, it's not a pleasant thing. It's not soothing. It's not informational. It's just freaking annoying. And I wish that they would stop. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate competition, but it's just not good. Okay, so that's my list as an addition as a bonus. I talked to a friend who uh, grew up very poor, grew up in a very problematic family. Mom on drugs, and the whole situation, as you can imagine. And I asked her this question, just to get a little perspective. She grew up in the South, lives in the South, and still knows a lot of people you know, in that world. Fortunately for her, uh, she's she's been able to go up the ladder a little bit. But her world comes from there. And so from her perspective, so if I get this right, okay, first of all, in the South, or at least with the poor, the police are more likely to hassle you than to help you. They don't see the police as, your, as their friend. They don't see the police as anything other than a pain in the butt. Related to that, is the police have this thing going on down there apparently that street vendors, they're, if they're not licensed or permitted, they're, they're hassling them. They're, they're forcing them to shut down. And there's a real resentment because the people, street vendors, they're out there selling desserts or fruits or sandwiches or whatever it is they're selling, they're just trying to make a living, and they're trying to make a living in a decent, honorable way. And you've got police hassling them, but you've got drug dealers on the corner, and the police, from her pr perspective, just aren't doing enough. And so there's a resentment with police. And especially if you go to certain areas of the city, you see spray-painted, F police. Uh, where I am, the world I'm living in, in the north, uh, 
it's it's a whole different ball game. But in the South, this is reality. And the last thing that she told me is there's just far too much access uh, activity with drugs with the poor. The police aren't doing anything about it. The neighborhoods aren't really doing much about it. You might see a grandmother out yelling at somebody that, you know, is selling drugs and she knows, and, you know, I knew your mother. What are you doing out here on the street? You know, that kind of thing. But uh, for the most part, she says that drugs in the poor communities are a huge problem. They're dirt cheap. They're, they're easy to get. And the poor are like poor everywhere. They get frustrated. They feel trapped. And so they're more apt to turn to drugs. And she hates it because of her background. It, she's very sensitive to it. And so it's a big problem for her. Now around here in the north, these days, everywhere in the world, drugs are available. That's not my thing, so I, can, I don't know the availability, but I don't see drug dealers on street corners up here. Again, it's, you know, I'm living in a completely different world, and I'm not saying that all the South is like that either. I'm talking about poor neighborhoods, which are in the South. Now, there's nice neighborhoods in the South that are not like this. So that's it. That's my 10 plus one, plus bonus of things that I dislike about Armenia, Colombia. And I'll see you, well, for those that are going to be watching the dating special, I'll see you Saturday evening. Everyone else, I'll see you Sunday at coffee time. Ciao.